Good morning. Now, there are two reasons for my videos. One is to expose Watchtower's judicial system as being absolutely nothing to do with God and being extremely harmful. And because it's harmful, many of you have been hurt, you've had your reputations damaged and your faith destroyed. So the other reason for these videos is to try to rebuild that faith. Now, as my regular viewers will know, I've been going through the book of John, and I've got to John chapter 13. Now, chapters 13 to 17 are Jesus' final words to his disciples before he dies. So it's full of love, encouragement, last-minute exhortation. But it also includes a warning. And we can start in chapter 15... And he says this in verse 20. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you too. How would they do this? Chapter 16, verse 2 says, they will expel you from the synagogues. Now, Watchtower does this. Very often on false accusations, they expel us from the Kingdom Hall, from our families and our friends. Now the verse goes on to say, when the, the hour is coming, when anyone who kills you will think he is doing a holy duty for God. So does Watchtower think that they're doing this for God? Yes, they do. They say, we've got to keep the congregation clean. But what they don't realise is that by making false accusations, they are making the congregation really unclean. We know where false accusations come from. John 8, 44, and I'll leave you to read that for yourselves. But what help do we get? Well, Jesus was going, and he was going to leave his disciples alone, without him in the world. But he was going to send the Spirit, the Comforter, to help them, so they wouldn't feel alone. But in Chapter 15 and verse 26, it calls this spirit the spirit of truth. Now, Watchtower claims to have the truth. They've taught us that there's no trinity, there's no immortal soul, hellfire doesn't exist, and so on and so forth. But have they got the spirit of the truth? Now, the scribes and Pharisees had the truth. They, had, they worshipped one God, they didn't worship idols, they expounded the law of Moses. But did they have the spirit of the law of Moses? No, they didn't. The spirit was leading us to love, joy, kindness, faithfulness, justice and mercy. But they ignored all those things and concentrated on the silly little niggly rules so that they could have power. Having said that, truth is fairly important, and one or two of you have said that you're struggling with the Trinity. So I'd be grateful if you would read through these chapters, 13 through to 17. They're full of love, but you'll find many references where Jesus says things like, he's going back to the Father, or that he says things which are not of his originality. He teaches us what the Father has taught him. They are two separate people. It reminds us of John 1.18, where it says that no one has seen God at any time that Jesus was sent to explain him to us. Now, the only thing is, there was one person who came very close to seeing God, and that was Moses. If you get a minute to read Exodus 33, you will find that Moses asked to see God, and God said no. You can't, because nobody can see me and live. However, Moses was put... Sorry, just a moment. Oh, no, we're fine. Sorry, I thought somebody was knocking. Birds on the roof. Moses asked to see God's glory. But God said no, but put Moses in the cleft of a rock, covered the mountain in a dark mist or fog, and Moses saw... God's glory. That's the closest anyone has come to it. Now, when Moses came down out of the mountain, of course, his face was bright, so bright, they had to put a veil on him. Now, 
I would like you to read that and think about it and think what God is. We know who God is, that he's a God of love, of kindness, of generosity. But what he is, what form he takes, I don't know. So I'm wondering if God could become human. I don't think he can. I think he's made of such stuff that it preempts him becoming a human. Just as a potter can't become the clay that he makes a pot out of. Now, I could be wrong. I probably am. Now, Jesus was created, as we know, and Jesus and the angels are able to put their personalities into human form. Jesus actually became human. So from this, I would say definitely that God and Jesus are separate, but very, very close. Jesus is the closest to God's heart. But we have further help. In John chapter 16, Jesus said, I tell you solemnly, anything you ask for from my Father, he will grant in my name. Why is that? He goes on in verse 26 to say, I don't say that I will pray to the Father for you. Why not? Because the Father himself loves you because you love me. We love Jesus Christ and God loves us for that, though we follow his commandments. So, my dear ones, I'll leave you with those chapters to read. They're very upbuilding and I wish you God's blessing on the reading of that. Thank you so much for watching.